the thing I, I first attracted me to this novel was classification is sometimes historical fiction. And so there is this crazy story of a serial killer in London in 1880. That's what I love about this story is because you don't quite know what is fiction and what is fact. Mm -hmm. And so you have real people in this story, Karl Marx, George Gissing, and also Dan Leno, and they all become implicated in some way. And that was pretty much what attracted me to this story in terms of how could this be fictionalized and put on the stage. As soon as I read the book, I mean, I, I emailed you, you know, after about 12 pages, and I said, and actually, you know, it was the, it was the, the, the court scenes the yeah. trial scenes, that somehow I thought, I really want to set those to music. I'm not sure exactly. Not the music hall <laughs> scenes, that's fascinating. Well, no, because, well, those were, I mean, those had to be kind of dreamed up, you know, the, yeah. the music hall, the numbers, you know, and that's what Mark, and then, of course, once I saw Mark's libretto for those, that became the most exciting part, you know, is to, like, intermingle the, 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 the actual music that the characters are singing with the, the, the things on the stage, like quartets and you know, these show tunes and, you know, singing and dancing and all that. You know, right. The, whole, the theater of it. So. Wait, there's yeah. dancing in the show? Well, there's oh, going to yeah, be some. Right? You're, yeah. Oh, there's a whole damn. Thing. We've got a whole tap on. dance for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we, <laughs> we cut out the ballet. So, Kevin, what's it like? This is your first chamber opera. You've yeah. written two grand so it's, it's, operas. It's like the same. It's just as much work. It really <laughs> it is. No, it is. It's, it's more pages than any of the other two operas. And I think there are a lot of challenges in it. I mean, it's it's taken... I feel like I could write like a hundred silent nights. Right. Because it's just sort of natural, but this is, um, it's more challenging. You know, you've got this character, John Cree, who's writing in his, in his diary about these gruesome murders. And so for him, it's passionate. It's like a turn on, it's a love song. And so do I set it as if, you know, from his point of view, or do I make reference to the macabre, you know, nature of it in the music? And so I think, in the end, it has to go in and out of, you know, it has to go it do both. And so, but that's knowing how to do that, you know. At, you mean at, between at, romance and horror? Yes, and, exactly. And horror and creepiness and he means it. So it's, it has to feel like he means it. And it's, it, that's it's been a challenge, but that's the fun of it. One of the coolest things about this role as I explore it is the fact that I get to break the fourth wall all the time and address the audience yeah very directly which is not something that i've done before actually mm -hmm. and i get to really tell my own story and sort of cherry pick what i share with the mm. audience which is also very the way you share it, yeah. because we don't see uh elizabeth's story unravel uh chronologically so i get to say this is what happened here and this is and that's that's really cool yeah you get to narrate your own life yeah, yeah. when do we get to do that yeah. Never. <laughs> These workshops are like the most intense uh, periods for me. I mean, the last, the first workshop, I remember we had the first day, and then I stayed up all night, literally all night, which I haven't done since college, you know, stay, actually, <laughs> actually doing that. I'm going to pull it all night. It's hard. But I, I actually so 40 did. years ago, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually... <laughs> <laughs> I remember it so well because I was a, so I was a, I was a sophomore just three years ago. You mean ago. you remember but, it? Yeah. Wow. But um, but anyway, and then we and I we we <laughs> we literally sorry. No, but I did. I stayed up all, and then the next day everybody had a new score. I like that about opera that you can get all this right and go through these workshops and rework things and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. And then once you have it, you know, then you sort of bring this other element in, which is the, the color, you know, the orchestral color. And even with this piece, with only, you know, 15 or 16 instruments, you can still do a lot. And you can, that, a lot of the storytelling could be done in the, in the orchestra. Yeah. This is my second new opera. Is this really? We got yeah. you after Jane. Really? Yeah. This is oh my honor. God. This is, this is an honor. honor. I, yeah. Oh, guys. From Jackie to Elizabeth Cree. Wow. Yeah, yeah that is quite a stress. <laughs> <laughs> it's a luxury, first of all, to be able to work with a living composer. I yeah, don't exaggerate. Theme. I mean, don't no, no, no. Right from this side. That, yeah. that I can not only consult with, but actually collaborate. And that's one of the most awesome things about the two of you is that you really do want input from mm -hmm. us, from our side of it. Um, but yeah, I have very limited experience with new opera. And it's refreshing, honestly, to be able to come to a work without any sort of 
baggage at all and to just to to really give new life to a character is yeah, just creative. the coolest this is, thing you're a collaborator it really was part of the, the the plan here to know you know almost all the cast ahead of time which is really kind of for me really exciting because like I'm writing it for you. I'm writing it, you know, for like you told me what your favorite notes are. It's so not. I think okay, A's and B flats. You Do you know. go back to that email? I, no, I ha I don't have it. No, I have it on a piece of paper. Ah. It's this horrible looking piece of paper, and I have your range, and I have um, Troy's, nice. and like where your good notes are. And I actually have Renee Fleming's because I'm writing another piece for her. So I just have like a range. It's just, just this don't get those mixed. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that would not. Yeah. So it's just like this ratty piece of paper that I, I, I keep trying to find it. You know, like, where is it? I lost it again. You should have it laminated. Cause I yeah, because like we wrote the first part, and then I had to get back to do the second half of the opera, and I forgot where the piece of paper was. I didn't want to write to you again. So. <laughs> but, but it really is um, so, so helpful, and it's so interesting, you know, because you can really build the role around your voice. Elizabeth Cree. Well, when we meet her at the onset of the opera, she um, is this sort of classy widow, um, but she doesn't start out that way. She uh, is a young girl, a very poor young girl, who experiences a lot of suffering as a young person and finds the theater and falls in love with it. And she finds the family that she never had in the theater uh, and it gives her life. And, and we see this spark in her eyes and this, this drive to escape her uh, her sad circumstance. When she first sort of experiences the music hall and she said she saw the poster and I wanted that her her first experience there to sort of be like, I don't know if you saw the movie Moulin Rouge, you know, yeah, when, yeah. when that, like when, um, like that kind of opening up of the, the spectacle. It absolutely opens up to the gods is the heavens for her. She's never experienced that's anything you, that's like when you this. Do your yeah. B flat. When I think heavens, but, I think B flat. B flat. But, yeah, but I, you said that's my favorite notes. I do think that Elizabeth Cree is, on a certain level, about the horror of poverty, mm -hmm. and how poverty creates crime, and how difficult it is to get out of that. Because crime. you care. How do about you her. escape it? I. You do you, care. You about care her. deeply about her. I, I Up hope. to a point. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> no, but you do care about her. Yeah. And, and if we've done our jobs, we've made the audience care about her on a certain level. And then they can think about what that means. What, what I am excited about, and this is not really what, I mean, it might have an impact on the reception of the piece at some level, but to me, that it's the most, one of the most economical sort of pieces I've written, that everything is interrelated by motives and what we call the harmonic language, is sort of the, 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 the color of the piece is very consistent, and much more so than, I would say, uh, Silent Night or Manchurian Candidate, which are much more stylistically varied and kind of, you know, fr free use of kind of pastiche. Even in the, the kind of music hall tunes in this piece, there's a, there's a commonality of language, and I, so I kind of approached it a little bit differently. So and it's, for me, that's kind of my, my little nerdy excitement. <laughs> no, no, but I think that that totally works, and that's why... I mean, with Silent Night and with Manchurian, you had two acts. You right, have one right. act here that is 85 to 90 minutes. Right, and right. It's, it requires different expectations, and I think you've completely fulfilled them musically. Oh, well, thank you. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cheers. <glad. laughs> I'm thirsty. Give me a little bit more. Jesus. Just uh, down that thing. Yeah, I will. <laughs> Welcome to my world. I, I blabbed enough. We need to no, get No, please. Move, so. I blab. Um, Keep blabbing. Let me see. Oh, what we else. should get you involved. What yeah. do you think about the library scenes? Please. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, look. It's yeah, a good it's show. So, it's yeah, a really good like show. Come see us, guys. Stop. I can't believe this. This is going to be edited out. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs>